Ahoy there, Captain Benzie here, coming at you from inside the Fulmination content creator test server with another video for EVE Echoes. In today's video, we're going to be taking our first look at the various different command battle cruisers that are due to be added to the game at some point in the future. Now, when I say first look, this video is going to be looking at the Myrmidon and the Prophecy variants, the two drone versions. So we will have a look at the Cyclone and the Ferox variants in a future video. Now, these are really quite interesting ships, and I know that the Prophecy and the Myrmidon are both two very popular battlecruisers on live as it is. And you can actually see these ships and their stats on the live server. They won't appear in a ship tree, they won't appear in the marketplace either, but if you do go to the market and you type command into the search bar, you'll get a whole load of different skins for all of these different ships. If you go into those skins, you can navigate through to the ship itself and have a look at its stats. So, I thought it'd be fun to sit down and have a chat about what these actually mean, how this all works together, and how it compares against the prophecies and the myrmidons, etc., that we currently have available on live. Now, if you do enjoy this video, let me know by hitting like on it, subscribe to the channel for all things Eve Echoes, ding the notification bell to never miss an upload, and let me know in the comment section down below what ships and topics you would like to see me cover in future content. If you do want to go the extra mile and be awesome and help support this channel, you can do so either by checking out our merchandise on our Redbubble merch store, or by joining us on Patreon and pledging to support there. Um, both of those are really, really gratuitously received. Thank you so much, guys, for all of your support. It really means a lot to me. Anyway, that all said and done then, let's start talking about the various different drone command battle cruisers, hopefully coming soon to EVE Echoes. Let's start off then with the Galente Myrmidon Command. Now, these first tier command battle cruisers are tech level 8. The Myrmidon itself is a tech level 7 battle cruiser and is very popular with pilots, as of course it is a drone battle cruiser and thus has a lot of serious firepower and versatility going for it. I've always found it to be a fairly unusual looking hull. Here, though, we see that the Myrmidon has swapped its usual swamp green and sort of metallic colorations instead for this sort of soft brownie metallic that's going around it, like the Algos Sniper or the Celestis Interdictor. It's a fairly muted colour scheme, um, nothing too special there. It's a bit of an unusual looking ship in my opinion, but I do quite like its vertical design. Anyway, looking at its stats then, we're going to be comparing this to the Tech 7 Myrmidon, just to give a basis of what kind of things have changed between Tech 7 and Tech 8, whether it's worth flying if you aren't really interested in the command aspects. Well, first of all then, let's have a look at the fitting profile. We have four drone tubes that can launch either small or medium drones, three high slots, four mid slots, and four low slots, along with three of each of the combat and engineering rigs. Now, if we compare that to the Tech 7 Myrmidon, we have lost a drone tube, gained a mid slot and lost a low slot. So there's a little bit of sort of drop here, um, sort of. We'll come to the drone tube bit in a minute because it's actually technically a boost as we'll see later on. The loss of a low slot is slightly disappointing. It means we lose some of our tanking capability here um, with the Myrmidon command compared to the Myrmidon, but I think four low slots isn't terrible. I just still kind of wish that was five. It feels weird losing two slots and only gaining one back when you've gone up a tech level, but as you'll see it does kind of make some kind of sense later on. Now, the defence has also increased here. It was 24,399 on the Tech, 8, Tech 7 Myrmidon. It's now 26,805, so it's gone up by 2,500, basically, um, which is not a small boost to the tank, and I think that does sort of make up for the loss of low slot. So you're going to lose a bit of sort of your tanking capability, but you, you've got a bigger tank to kind of counter for that. As we come a little bit further down though, you'll see we've got a fairly decent size capacitor, 2,663, but curiously again, that is smaller than the Tech 7 Myrmidon, which was 2,689. Like, there's not much in it there with the capacitor. It's literally like 16, uh, or 26, 26, 26 by my mass, 26 uh, megawatt, uh, 26 gigajoules different, which really isn't that much, but it's still weird to see you go up a tech level and lose capacitor. The power grid, though, is bigger. 651 has become 675, so we can fit a few larger modules on there, which kind of makes sense because mid slots tend to be fairly power grid heavy. Um, so we've kind of, you know, we've lost a low slot, but we've gained a mid slot and a little bit of uh, power grid to help make up for that. 
Our signature radius here on the Myrmidon Command is also larger, but we do have a massive increase in our flight velocity. We've gone from 191 meters per second to 236. That is insanely fast for a battlecruiser's base speed. Like, seriously, <laughs> that is worryingly uh, fast, and I do kind of hope that that gets a bit of a nerf when we hit live. Otherwise, again, destroyers are going to be in even more trouble when they're now being outrun by, like, Myrmidon battlecruisers, which is a problem. That to me is a bit too fast. And I'm kind of looking at a lot of these stats and thinking this is clearly work in progress because there's just some really, really interesting design choices. Like, I don't get why these need to be so fast compared to their basic variants. They're command ships. They don't need to be, like, highly manoeuvrable. It's not their big thing. They're there as a support role. Anyway, this kind of then comes to a head again with the mass. The mass has changed from 12.7 million kilograms to 13.0, but the inertia modifier has increased rather nicely from 0.49 up to 0.54. So, that's actually a net increase. When you work that out there, that is an increase in agility in the Myrmidon Command. Not by much, but it's it, it's there. And again, this kind of gets me. I don't understand why different ships of the same design would have a different hull mass. Ultimately, unless you're counting for things like the scanning arrays and that that may have changed between the Myrmidon and the Myrmidon Command, ultimately I do think that these should be very similar to each other. Keep the inertia modifiers the same, or the mass the same, that kind of thing, and just tweak it with one of those or the other, not with both. So what you end up with here is, on paper, a ship that looks slightly less tanky, gets an additional mid-slot, and loses a drone tube. But that drone tube is immediately accounted for in our trait description here. First things first, we've got a 20km drone control range additional, which is nice, it was 15 on the Myrmidon, so we've got 5 additional kilometers of drone control range, and of course that is then added to with skills and rigs and things to, if you want to go for a sort of a kiting fit here. But you'll notice that we've gone from 30% drone DPS to 40% drone DPS on the Myrmidon command. Now if we do a quick bit of maths here, and if we were to, to do 5 times 150%, which is what it would be on the Myrmidon, 5 drone tubes with 30% times 5, 150% increase to drone DPS, that is a factor of 7.5. Whereas here on the uh, the prophes uh, the uh, moment on command, that's a 40% increase per level, which becomes 200% at full training, and four times 200% is a factor increase of eight. So it's a small boost to the amount of DPS that these can do. You've got one less drone, but you're doing more DPS. Now that's a double-edged sword. On one hand, it means you don't need to fit as many drones, which means you're not spending as much on fittings here on the Myrmidon Command. But the counter side to that is if someone destroyed a drone on the standard Tech 7 Myrmidon, you only lost 20% of your DPS. Here, you lose 25%. So it's kind of a counter, you know, a double-edged sword there. And you lose that, obviously, until you drop another drone into the tube and launch it out. So it's kind of, you know, there's a, there's a pro and a con to that, but overall that is an increase in DPS. If you're going to be going ratting, um, then the moment on command does seem like it is going to be a better ship. You're going to get a longer drone control range, plus you're getting higher drone DPS, you're getting the same 5% increase to the effective hit points of your drones, and you're still getting that sev same 7.5% armor repairer efficiency, which means under the current system that is actually worth armor tanking. Only ships that have armor repairer efficiency on them are worth using armor tank modules, and even then, only if you're skilled into them fairly equally to your shields. Otherwise, just skill shields, it just genuinely works out better. But anyway, there you can see we've kind of got a boost directly over the Tech 7 Myrmidon. Then we also get the boosts here to the command bursts. Now, the Myrmidon command seems to be ba uh, based around the skirmish command bonus, which we now know this, uh, the skirmish command, but. Uh, command burst is the one that is going to reduce the uh, signature radius of nearby ships, increase their agility values, plus it's going to um, increase the amount of effect they get from afterburners and micro warp drives, whilst also simultaneously looking like it's going to be giving an increase to uh, uh, stasis webifiers, warp scramblers, and warp disruptors, which is a really, really cool bit of information there. I'm looking forward to these being added, and you get a 15% increase to the skirmish command burst strength, so it'll be 15% more effective than others, and it gets a 2% increase to armoured command burst strength, which is 10% at full training, and armoured command burst strength is going to make your armour repairers even more efficient, they're going to use less capacitor per cycle there, um, 
which is really cool. Um, you'll have a burst that increases everyone's armor hit points and also increases their armor resistances across the board, which is really, really useful. This means actually having a Myrmidon command around here, this is going to be worth armor tanking on its own, but it actually may make armor tanking viable for other ships around you. I am still hoping we get changes to armor tanking and that it gets some minor buffs in the April test and the May balance patch, but we'll have to see on that. Finally then, as it is a command a battle cruiser here, we get a 5% increase, 25% of full training, to command burst effective range, which means you'll be able to hit ships if they're further out. Now we don't know at this point if that's going to be just a bubble that you're either in range or you're out of range, or if it's going to be like some of the E-War modules that we got recently, and um, that have an optimal range and an accuracy fall off and will hit every ship nearby, so you, like, you're 100% effective if you're within 10 kilometers, but you only get 50% of the effect if you're within 15 kilometers that kind of thing, who knows, we don't know yet, that still remains to be seen. But across the board we've got an interesting looking ship that is a direct DPS upgrade over its Tech 7 variant, um, it does lose a little bit of tank but gains a mid slot and the ability to use these really cool command bursts, well I say gains the ability to, the Tech 7 Myrmidon can fit command bursts, just the Myrmidon command then also gets bonuses to them, which to me this is kind of disappointing in design, you've got a ship that is better than its Tech 7 variant and does more, I kind of feel like command ships shouldn't just be better than the basic variant, they should be slightly worse. I do genuinely think that we should have the same 15km drone range and possibly even a drop in d uh, drone DPS, etc. here on the Myrmidon Command because more of its systems are taken over by the concept of it doing command bursts. It doesn't need to be doing as, as good combat, otherwise what's the point in the Tech 7 Myrmidon once you hit Tech 8? You upgrade to the Myrmidon Command and you kind of get to be a command ship and a Myrmidon, which is, you know, a little bit disappointing. They've made that design decision um, to make it better than the Myrmidon and to give it more tools and options as well. I'd like, I, I'm personally a believer in the concept that if you've got additional tools, you should lose something else elsewhere. So the fact that we've got the ability to use the command bursts effectively means we should probably lose some of our solo capability. But I suppose it has lost a low slot and does therefore lose some tanking capability there. Who knows? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Speaking of ships being direct upgrades to each other, let's have a look at the Myrmidon 2 command, which is the Tech 10 variant. Now this, I actually really like the colour scheme on this. That sort of soft brownish grey for the detailing, and this weird sort of almost purpley blue metallic shimmer to it. It's a really interesting looking colour scheme, and I quite like that a lot. And we do get a snowfield adventure as well, but <laughs> hey, those are weird skins. I love them and I hate them at the same time. It's a, it's a weird feeling. Anyway, attributes and fittings then. Compared Comparing this to the Myrmidon Command, we have very much a similar um, fitting profile here. Still four drone tubes, still three high slots, still three mid slots, but we get that fifth low slot back, which gives us the versatility in tank that we were losing from the Myrmidon into the Command. Our power grid is even bigger now, it's 750, and our capacitor has rocketed up to 2880 gigajoules. This comes along with a boost to our defences, which are now at 31,444. That is a massive increase over both the Myrmidon and the Myrmidon Command. As we go further down, the signature radius has dropped even smaller. Obviously, we went from the Myrmidon to the Command, the signature radius got bigger, but now the Command 2 is actually lower than the original Myrmidon. The original Myrmidon was 248, we're now at 234.8. We are also still ridiculously fast at 244 meters per second. I do not understand why a battle cruiser needs to move at 244 meters per second. Please nerf this before launch because that is too much for a battle cruiser to have. Our uh, mass and inertia, the mass remains at 13.0, the inertia has dropped from the command down to 0.52, so it is slightly less agile than the basic command, but it makes up for that with ridiculous flight velocity currently. Finally then, a scan resolution here of 227 is a whopping upgrade over the tier 7 Myrmidons 183 and a slight upgrade over the commands 222. Things do uh, continue along that theme of direct upgrade once we start looking at the trait description. Instead of the Myrmidon's 15km drone range or the Command's 20km, we now have a massive 25km boost to the Myrmidon 2 Command's drone control range. 
Instead of the Myrmidon's 30% DPS, the Command's 40% DPS, the Command 2 now has 50% DPS. So remember, we had 5 drone tubes on the Myrmidon, with a 150% uh, possible boost, which gave us an improvement factor of 7.5. If we then looked at the Command, that was only 4 drone tubes, but they had a 200% boost to DPS, which was a factor of 8. Now, this is 4 tubes still, but with an increase of 250%, which is a factor of 10. This is a big upgrade over the Prophecy. If the Prophecy was at 7.5, this is now at 10. So, I mean, basically what I'm trying to get at there is if you put in a load of drones that say had 100 DPS each, which is insane, but it's a rounded figure. The standard Myrmidon had five of those, 500 damage, plus 150% would have been up at 750. The Command, if you'd put those same drones in, you'd only had four of them, so it's 400 DPS to start with, but then it's times 200%, which becomes 800 DPS. Here we've still got those four drones doing 400 DPS, but they're then being multiplied by 250%, taking us to 1000 DPS. I hope that math makes sense. So we're getting a big boost here on our drone DPS. We have the same 5% to 25% drone EHP boost, and that same 7.5% to 37.5% armor repair efficiency. So this is going to be an armor tank ship. Then when we look at the, uh, the, the the command burst unit here. Again, it's going to be skirmish command bursts, and it's advanced skirmish command that we're looking into here. Rather than the Myrmidon command having a 3% increase to skirmish and a 2% to armor, it's now a 5% to skirmish and a 3% to armor. So that's rather than 15% and 10%, that's now up at 25% and 15%. So it's a big boost across the board there. Plus, the range has gone from plus 5%, 25%, up to 7.5 to 37.5% command burst effect range. So this literally, once you hit tech 10, other than if you like the look of the com uh, Myrmidon command or you don't want to spend as much, the Myrmidon 2 command is a direct upgrade over the Myrmidon command and is probably the best version of the Myrmidon in the game. It is fast, it has long range, it has incredibly high DPS boosts on its stats there, plus it gets the ability to boost up these command bursts, which are extremely effective. As we've just talked about, the skirmish command burst um, hits everyone nearby you in your fleet. It drops their signature radius. It increases their agility factor. It makes them faster with the afterburner and the micro warp drive. It increases the warp scrambler and warp disruptor ranges and stasis web of fires too, which is just a really cool profile of boosts. The armor uh, command burst then, makes your repair is even more efficient, they use less capacitor, you increase all your nearby ship's um, armor HP, and you increase their armor resistances as well. And as far as we can tell, this will of course fit your own ship. There's no reason to believe it won't, since group armor repairers and group shield boosters and group capacitor transmitters affect your own ship too, so why wouldn't the command bursts? This means that even in solo play, the Myrmidon 2 command is going to be an absolutely amazing ship, and I think a lot of Myrmidon pilots are going to be very excited to see this one and fly it when they eventually hit Tech 10. Seems a long way off yet, but with the amount of skill points we're getting through, like maintenance and your daily login rewards, it might not be quite as far as you think. Who knows? Let's have a look then at the Prophecy Command. Now, the Prophecy, the Tech 7 Golden Space Turkey, is probably one of the most popular battlecruisers in EVE Echoes to date. Being a drone battlecruiser, naturally, it's a very popular choice for people who want to run solo uh, encounters and missions, etc., as it is a great way of making ISK in relative safety. Now, the Prophecy Command then, if the Prophecy is a Golden Space Turkey, the Prophecy Command is the Undercooked Space Turkey or the Sunburned Space Turkey, because that is a very unusual colour scheme. Disappointingly, as well, that appears to be the exact same skin as used on the Prophecy Command. Um, in fact, if we were to jump into the inventory here, you can see that the Prophecy Command here at the bottom left, actually technically on the graphic here, uses a Carnid version of the skin. That's the black and silver colour scheme that you see on things like the Dragoon Assault, etc., and the Executioner 2. So anyway, let's have a look at the Prophecy Command's stats in comparison. Comparing this, of course, this is the Tech 8 Prophecy Command, comparing it to the Tech 7 Prophecy. So looking at the fit, we have lost a drone tube, we've gone from 5 drone tubes down to 4, these launch small or medium drones, we still have 3 high slots, we get an additional mid slot going up to 4, but we do lose a low slot going from 5 down to 4. 
We still have three combat rigs and three engineering rigs, however. So you may be thinking, hang on a second, that means the Prophecy Command loses some DPS over the Tech 7 variant. After all, it's gone from five drones down to four. And that's not technically true. It just becomes more efficient with those drones, as you'll see. If you've watched the Myrmidon section already, you'll know that actually there is a DPS net gain here, but we'll talk about that more later. Let's have a look at the defences first of all. So the Tech 7 Prophecy had a defence of 25,316, here we've gone up to 27,813. So that's a net increase in our passive tanking capabilities, which does come at the expense of a lost low slot. So if you were going to be putting things like armour repairers or whatever the heck you wanted to put in those low slots, you may have lost one of those. Um, since you've gone from five slots down to four, but you are getting an increase in passive tank to kind of compensate. Let me know if you think that's a good enough compensation or if you're kind of like, you know, oh, what am I going to do without my fifth low slot? Let me know what you would change from your Prophecy to the Prophecy Command at the cost of that low slot. The additional mid slot here does insinuate to me that the mid slots are where the Command Burst modules are going to be, which is really cool because that means the Destroyer Commands get five high slots, which they can actually use for their turrets, which is amazing. Now, I know a lot of people have said, well, no, they should be high slots because that's what they are in EVE Online. Yeah, but on Energy Nosferatus and Energy Neutralizers are high slots in EVE Online as well, and those have also been moved to mid slots. So, yeah, I kind of get the feeling Command Bursts are going to be mid slots. The fact that these get an additional mid at the cost of a low it kind of insinuates that to me at least. Anyway, so we've talked about the defences. The power grid has increased as well, 744 up to 768. The capacitor has slightly decreased, 2,689 down to 2,663 gigajoules. It's not a big drop, but it's still perplexing that it would drop at all, especially since from what we've seen, um, and some people have mentioned when they looked at the command burst modules while they were online briefly, um, we saw that perhaps they may use capacitor and fuel, which makes them very unique amongst modules, and it's kind of to be expected. You need the ship to be able to power the command burst and fuel as well, then means that it's like the other group shield, uh, shield, group shield boosters, that kind of thing, that use fuel, so you kind of have the extra expenditure there of using it, plus your ship needs the capacitor, so it's curious there that the capacitor has dropped on the Prophecy Command. Our signature radius has also increased 233.6 on the standard Prophecy, up to 248, uh, 245 here on the Command. The flight velocity though has had a mad increase, 194 to 240. There is no reason that a bra uh, battle cruiser should be moving at 240 meters per second. That is insanely quick and that needs nerfing before this comes to live. Scanner resolutions had a big increase, 186 up to 226, and our mass and inertia modifier have had some significant changes too. The standard prophecy is not very agile, it's 15.3 million, but with a 0.4 inertia modifier. Here, the mass has significantly dropped to 13.5 million kilograms, but the inertia has gone up from 0.4 to 0.5. Now, I haven't actually run the numbers on that to see whether or not that's a, a net gain or not. In my head, I'm looking at that 13.5 times 0.5 to me is going to be a lower number than 15.3 times 0.4, so I don't know, there's kind of a, uh, I don't know, I don't know how to look at that one. Um, it's still perplexing to me to see that they, the mass has gone from 15.3 to 13.5. Like, when they changed the prophecy to the prophecy command, did losing that low slot and the drone tube really free up that much mass from the ship? That's insane. I, I don't get why this should be so different to its Tech 7 brethren, but eh, okay, there we go. Now, I was talking about the trait description earlier. I was saying that the change from five drone tubes down to four does actually still give us a net gain, and you'll see why in just a second. First of all, we get an increase to the drone control radius, 15 kilometers on the Prophecy to 20 kilometers here on the Prophecy Command. If we look at our Advanced Battle Cruiser Command bonus, we go from 30% drone DPS to 40%. Now, at full training, that's 150% drone DPS. Here, it's 200%. Now, if you work the math on that, 5 times 150 is 150% uh, is 7.5, 4 times 200% is 8. Now, basically what I'm trying to get at here is that if you were to put in a load of drones that are 100 DPS, just theoretically, on the Prophecy, that would be 5 100 DPS drones for an, a, a total 500 DPS. It then gets boosted by 150% to give you 750 DPS. Here on the Prophecy Command, those four drones all have 100 DPS, so you've only got 400 DPS to start with. So the basic DPS, yes, is 100 lower than it would have been on the standard Prophecy. However, you're then multiplying that by 200%, which takes you up to 800 DPS. So 750 on the Prophecy, 800 here on the Command. 
Now, that is, of course, a net increase. It's a bit of a double-edged sword, as I mentioned in the Myrmidon section. It means that, yes, okay, you're using less, uh, you're using fewer drones, which means it costs less to fit the ship, but at the same time, if someone does destroy one of those drones, the Prophecy losing a drone drops 20% of its DPS, the Prophecy Command losing a drone drops 25% of its DPS before you can launch a new one, so you do take a little bit of a hit to your damage capability, but for solo PvE, that's not a problem at all. Finally then, the drone DPS and armor resistance are the same as they were on the Prophecy. 5% additional drone velocity, so they reach their target faster, and a 4% armor resistance, um, which obviously means that you have better resistances on your armor. Still worth shield tanking a Prophecy though, trust me, it's, it's ridiculous right now. Armored Command bonus though, here you can see this is where our Command Bursts come into effect, and the Prophecy Command seems to be mainly geared around the Armored Command Burst, which is the one that increases, um, sorry, decreases the capacitor requirements of your armor repairers, whilst also increasing everyone's armor resistance, and um, giving you additional armor hit points onto your armor tank, which of course is a nice thing to have. We get the com Armored Command Burst strength increased by 3% per level, 15% of full training, 5% additional range from the Command Burst, effective range there. Um, it's 25% additional range at full training, and then a 2% increase to information command burst strength. Now, we don't actually see what this does in Eve Echoes. But these, uh, the information command bursts didn't appear in that market search, which we had a look at in a previous video. Information command bursts in Eve Online are the ones that normally affect your E War modules um, and things like scan resolution. So, those here, I imagine, are going to do the same. Things like energy neutralizers, energy nosferatus, scan resolution, maximum lock targets, perhaps that kind of thing there you could do with the information command burst strength. I don't know, that remains to be seen exactly how that one works. But this means that the Prophecy Command is almost a direct upgrade to the Tech 7 Prophecy. It's certainly faster, it's got higher DPS, it gets the ability to use these command bursts with more effectiveness. Obviously the standard Tech 7 Prophecy can still fit a command burst, it just doesn't get the, uh, the 15 and 10% boosts there plus the additional range. Um, so across the board, it it's kind of a mixed bag. It's better DPS, it's faster, it's higher defenses, better power grid. Most of it is just flat out better, but we, it does come at the cost of a low slot, which might affect your setup. Um, and it does become this sort of, uh, I don't know, I don't know. I think it's an upgrade. I'm, as far as I can see, that is a direct upgrade over the prophecy. Let me know. Now, if the Prophecy Command is a sort of upgrade over the Prophecy, then the Prophecy 2 Command is a direct upgrade over both of them, which you'd kind of expect, considering that this is a Tech 10 ship, and is thus still a few months out for even the best of us. With the amount of uh, SP that we're getting through daily login rewards, um, plus through things like uh, the maintenance rewards and reimbursements, that kind of thing, who knows when we'll actually hit, but it's still a month or so away for, I think, even the fastest of players. Um, but hey, Tech 10 is beginning to look really exciting. And the Prophecy 2 command here looks like a well done turkey. That sort of soft, uh, meaty brown colour with black detailing on what would otherwise be the gold or the silver. It's an interesting colour scheme and I'm not sure what to make of it. I don't hate it, it's quite handsome. Um, it just, it's a bit unusual. It's different, which I suppose is a good thing. Anyway, let's look at the attributes and fittings. Comparing this to the Prophecy Command, you can see it has the exact same line, except we get that mid-slot back. This means we've got an additional, uh, sorry, the low slot back. We get an additional mid-slot over the Prophecy, we get an additional low slot over the Prophecy Command. Um, which is really cool. We still are only at four drones, but again, we're going to see later, that doesn't affect all that much. So across the board, direct upgrade here over both the Prophecy and the Prophecy Command in regards to its fitting profile. The power grid output has gone up to 850, up from 744 on the Prophecy and 768 on the Prophecy Command, so that's a big increase there on your power grid capabilities, and the capacitor has increased again as well. Whereas it went down slightly for the Prophecy Command, it's gone up massively for the Command 2, the 2 Command, at 2880, which is much more than the original Prophecy's 2689. You've got an additional, like, 200 uh, gigajoules of capacitor there, which is really nice. Defences have also shot through the roof. The original Prophecy was 25,000, it was 28,000 for the Command. We're here at 32,627 for the Prophecy 2 Command major improvements there over its tanking capabilities, plus the return of that fifth low slot means we get a lot of options there in regards to survivability and tanking. 
Signature radius has gone even smaller. It's smaller than the Prophecy here at 221.1 down from 233.6 and our flight velocity has somehow gone up again to 248 meters per second which if you thought 240 meters per second was too fast for a battle cruiser, 248 meters per second is definitely too fast for a battle cruiser. That is, that's outpacing many cruisers, it's outpacing many destroyers and that is a big problem. The mass in inertia, um, our mass stays the same as with the Prophecy Command, 13.5 million kilograms, but the inertia modifier has dropped slightly to 0.48, um, which is, you know, it's a nice change there. The lower your inertia modifier, the better, so this is slightly more agile than the Prophecy Command. So direct upgrades over both the Prophecy and the Prophecy Command here, and that does not let up when we look at the trait description. Our roll bonus is now 25 kilometers of drone control range, up from 15 on the Prophecy and 20 on the Command. That's always a nice thing to have. And our DPS now for the drones is plus 50%. So again, using the example of fitting drones that did 100 DPS, the standard prof prof prophecy fits 5 of those, 500 DPS standard, then gets boosted by 150 thanks to the ship's skill bonuses to 750 DPS. The prophecy command gets 4 of those drones, so it's only 400 DPS to start with, but it's then modified by 40% drone DPS, which is 200% uh, at full training, giving you 800 DPS in effective at the end. Here you still start with those four 100, uh, 100 DPS drones, giving you 400 DPS to start with, but you're now getting 250% drone DPS off your ship skills, which takes you all the way up to 1000 DPS on your actual DPS output effectively. It's a factor of 10 increase there, which is really, really quite powerful. And I can see a lot of solo drone pilots really enjoying this. We still get that same 4% armor resistance and same 5% drone velocity, but now our armored command bonus has become advanced armored command and is giving us bigger boosts across the board. Rather than 3% and 2%, it's now 5% and 3%, which is a, diff a difference of 15% and 10% at full training to 25% and 15%. So we're getting an additional 5% information command and an additional 10% on armoured command, which means your armour repairers are going to be even more efficient, you're going to be boosting people's resistances by a higher amount, including your own as far as we can tell, and you're going to be boosting up the amount of armour EHP that they actually have. You're getting additional range on those, plus you're getting whatever the information command burst is going to do too. This is 100% a direct upgrade over the Prophecy and the Prophecy Command, which again, the fact that it makes the Prophecy Command utterly useless once you get it is slightly disappointing, but it is a Tech 10 ship, so kind of to be expected, I guess, that, you know, the, these are so far off for most people, they're going to be fairly expensive to build. The skills they use are mainly advanced skills, so you need to train into them quite heavily. It does make sense that they're going to kind of be the be-all, end-all of their line. I'm just personally a believer that if something is getting additional tools over other ships, it should lose something in comparison. So ships that get command bursts, for example, should possibly do less DPS, but I don't know. That's just me. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on that in the comment section below. Now, whilst those are the two drone command battle cruisers, and thus brings us nicely to the end of this particular video, it's not the end of the story, and we still have both the Ferox command and the Cyclone command to have a look at as well in a future video. So we're going to have a look at those and what they do and how they operate. Anyway, folks, thank you for watching this one. Please do let me know what your thoughts and opinions are regarding these ships. If you are a Prophecy or a Myrmidon pilot, how do these command variants look to you? Even though we don't have full information on how command bursts work, do you think these are ships that you're likely to be flying in the future? If you're looking forward to the Ferox or the Cyclone, do stay tuned, ding that notification bell, subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss that video when it launches, because there's a lot of interesting stuff there to talk about as well, plus the fact that these ships, in my opinion, are some of the best looking battle cruisers out there with the exception of course of the hurricane but that's something we're going to cover in a future video anyway folks let me know your thoughts and opinions on all of this in the comment section down below do remember to keep checking back this week as well for the different giveaways in this week it's going to be an interesting giveaway that i do and um, we're going to have a lot of fun with that one for the combo omega this week anyway folks thank you for watching right the way to the end happy sailing and see you in new eden